while you're watching, feel free to tweet at hashtag ACDA Intreat, and that way we can get some um, excitement going on about this event. But um, thank you so much for coming uh, to the session. Uh, I figured the best way to start is to tell you a little bit about myself. I have been singing uh, most of my life. Music's always so important to us. And because I was the valedictorian of my kindergarten class, I got to sing a solo about an inchworm at my graduation. Um, and if you can, uh, just so you know, you can see the uh, you can see the PowerPoints on the slides. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, so I sing that song, and then shortly after, I won't tell you what year it is, but if you're the good detectives, you can see what year I graduated from kindergarten. Um, uh, shortly after, I begged my mom for a boom box it was the sony cfs w309 radio cassette recorder mega bass handheld boom box yes i've said that a few times in my life especially as a young seven-year-old but i love this thing she finally got it for me and as you can see there are two different dual cassette decks on that thing and i had the genius idea to cover we didn't call it cover back then, or at least I didn't, but I wanted to sing my favorite soundtrack, which was from American Tale. And Fievel Mousekowitz sang this beautiful song called Somewhere Out There, and I loved it, and it was a duet, and I was like, hmm, maybe I can play around with my boombox and sing both parts. So I eventually, I, I played my original track recording and I sang and I recorded my voice and that track on to the b-side which allowed me to karaoke but then I wanted to sing the other part and I started to sing both parts so I'd play back my recording and sang with my recording and that was my introduction into singing with recordings um I am so honored to be here today to talk to you a little bit about virtual singing and ACDA has been such an amazing uh thing in my life. It has been an organization that I hold very dear to my heart. In 2009, I went to the ACDA um, National Convention, and I got to meet uh, our local hero in Illinois, uh, William Burr, and I got to sing with Maria Guinan and Anton Armstrong at the uh, National uh, Multicultural Honor Choir. It was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. And I had a very, very interesting encounter right before we went up on stage. We were standing behind the, the concert venue and this dude in jeans who like, I don't know if he was a bum or I don't know who he is, but he's just like, you know, casual clothes. We're all in tuxes and he's talking to us. He's a really nice guy. And he's saying, how are you enjoying the whole event? And we just talked for a little bit. Um, and then we go to the concert and then halfway through the concert, Anton Armstrong says, I'd like to honor some of the most amazing composers out there. And he has a bunch of people stand up. And he, then he called upon this, the dude that was talking to us backstage. And it was the Fabio of, of, con of concert choir, Eric Whitaker. Um, and, and I couldn't believe that I had talked to Eric Whitaker because I hadn't known what he looked like. We didn't have social media. I just knew that I loved singing his music. And so that was my first encounter with Eric Whitaker, the guy who kind of popularized virtual choirs. Um, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. So ACDA became this, this thing in my life that I'm so glad to uh, honor today and being here. Um, as you can see, the Illinois retreat, um, which is now to this year an in-treat, um, has been very formative uh, in my life, especially as a young choral director. Um, here's some pictures from 2007 and 2008. And then um, I took the things that I learned and I went back to my school and I was really good at pretending to be a choral director, as you can see here with the, the bad facial hair and the right picture and the pretending how to play piano at performance in the left picture. I'm sure you've all experienced some, some sort of uh, experiences like that. But as I was at the school in Grays Lake, Illinois, uh, one day, one of my fifth graders burst into my room. And when I say burst, I mean, he flung the door open and he was so excited to show me about this cool thing that he saw on the internet. Now this is 2008, 2000, um, this is like, wow, 12 years ago. And he said, you have to see this, Mr. C, Mr. C, Mr. C, you have to see this. And I was like, okay. Um, it's all about Star Wars. You like Star Wars and uh, the animated series had just come out and he said, you have to watch this. And so he brought up this website called YouTube and played this for me.
So I'm not getting any sound. Oh no, let's try it this really quick. It's sharing sound. Is everyone um, getting sound or just some people? X2 fighter and the blast. It's past the gun dance. He walks over on. This is spaceships, it's monsters, it's Star Wars. Okay, so um, he he play, he wanted me to see that song, and I actually really very much enjoyed it. Because we love it. There you go. Um, and so what? Uh, afterwards, um, I finished teaching for a few years, and then I went to the University of Illinois to get my master's degree. And I decided that I wanted to do some case studies. I wanted to see how people were using the internet to uh, create music. And so I did this case study on a young, a young musician named Wade Johnson, who was 19 years old, who would sing in his, his, his dorm room, his bedroom, his kitchen. Here's Wade. So hopefully you were able to see that. Um, one of the things uh, that I found was really fascinating about that is that there's this there's a, such a complexity to how Wade put together all the things that he did. And here's an analysis of the video that I did. This video was from 2008. So remember, this is a long time ago and people are just starting to do this whole multi-tracking thing. As you can see over here, he started talking a little bit, but he's got a ukulele sound, voice, a second voice, a shaker, a snap. This, just this idea of just layering things on top of each other. By now, nowadays, it's kind of... Um, we're stuck on the Star Wars slide. All right, I will try sharing again. Can you see a different slide now? Okay, some people are fine, some people are not. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Um, I'll, I'll do my best. We're not stuck in Zoom. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's this complexity of all the things that people are, uh, that, that Wade was putting. And so I started to apply that to my classroom. Um, and I started to have uh, facilitate these projects where I'd have students actually, um, actually try creating their own videos. Uh, and so here are a few uh, citations to the articles that I did. Um, and so when I went back, I went and taught in uh, near Rockford, Illinois, and then in Decatur, Illinois. And so it was really cool uh, to watch my students create their own videos like the ones I was seeing on YouTube. Well, in 2000, um, 2012, I went back to the University of Illinois to get my doctorate. And I um, did a uh, multiple case study of different virtual vocal ensembles. Um, we had been using the term virtual choirs and I um, was realizing there's a lot of different ways people are creating. And so I wanted to look at um, all the different types of virtual ensemble, vocal ensembles that people were doing. And so here are the three participants that I, uh, that I studied. You have Dan Wright on the left, who is a 22 year old from New York. And he uh, said to me, you know, I just wanted to sing barbershop and no one would sing with me. So I created my own ensembles. Uh, Dave uh, Francois, who's in the middle, who was an, uh, a 30, at the time a 32-year-old church musician. Uh, he went from creating one bands to acapella music and now does virtual choirs. You can talk to him during the, uh, the panel tomorrow that I facilita I'm facilitating. And then on the right, you have Melody Myers, who I liken to uh, 
uh, Eric Whitaker's vir virtual protege. She was the, the soloist for um, Luke Sarumque, Virtual Choir Number no. 1 by Eric Whitaker. So um, we'll learn a lot more about Melody later. But one of the cool things is she loved to entertain and she used YouTube as a venue to entertain people and create choral music. So um, that's a little bit of history about my, my stuff. I've been researching online singing and music making for a decade now. And here is an overview of the sessions I'm doing. We're to, right now, we're going to be talking about virtual singing, where we've, we were, where we've come from, where we are now, and where we might go. Then um, in the next two sessions, I will be showing you how to use free mobile apps to facilitate online singing with your students. Because if we can't get back into the classroom and we still want to have our students sing, um, I'm going to hopefully help you learn about a hundred different ways. Well, I'll teach you like four or five different ways, but you can make that into a hundred different ways of um, of creating with your students. And then finally, uh, tomorrow evening, we're doing a panel with David, Melody, and then Matthew Klaus, uh, Claus, who is from Ithaca College. Um, so uh, Tim Sharp earlier today talked about the, we, how we've kind of gone from this nerdy, futuristic possibilities to some very real, cool, innovative ways to make music. And so um, one of those formerly nerdy, futuristic way, possibilities is to get Consider how um, we might present music to our audiences in a concert form if we can't meet face to face. So if you have not already, go to YouTube. Um, you can type in tinyurl.com slash ACDA20 HVC1. So that's History Virtual Choirs 1. And we're going to watch a premiere that starts in two minutes. So go ahead over to that. And um, what we're going to do is feel free to use the chat function and you can talk to each other and make comments as we watch it together. As you see on my screen, I'm saying hello to everyone in the chat, room, the chat uh, function. We can all head back to Zoom now. Thank you so much for heading over to YouTube. I'm gonna close it out. All right, um, so teachable moment here. Uh, I um, had everything perfect lined up and everything. And then this morning, my the original version was blocked. It, it was no longer visible. And so I had to, um, I had to quickly re-upload it. And as you can imagine, it took over two hours to render and one hour to upload. So um, I, unfortunately, the audio is a little wonky because um, I forgot to click one button, but that's okay. Teachable moment. Um, we have those things and I know you're going to share with me the same grace that all of the parents that you worked with shared with you when uh, this, this season. Um, but yeah, just a cool teachable moment. Copyright's real. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the panel um, or during question time. So uh, thank you for watching that. And I hope you can see how it'd be really cool to premiere some things um, for videos. And I hope those, uh, my fellow Illinoisans, um, that uh, you appreciated how many Illinois choirs were in there. Um, and do we have any of the directors in that group here today? Um, I don't know, but I hope so. Uh, we had a, a number of groups from Illinois that I decided I put in there. Um, cool. Uh, so that's kind of where we've come. And now where are we? I wanna talk a little bit about a, uh, a research um, uh, article that I wrote recently um, about the creative dispositions that people have when creating online. And I'm going to make this really quick. Um, we've got the first icon over there. Is, anyone have an idea? You probably know what that means, right? DIY, do it yourself. So uh, it's like allowing people to people use this 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 technology thing to help um create the things that they've got in their heads and they do it themselves and uh it, it becomes a a reality and this kind of teaches uh people different types of 
skills of literacies, of, of musical literacies and of um, technological literacies and media literacies. For example, if you created a one person virtual choir, you're learning all the parts, you're seeing how they fit together, you're creating, you've got a vision that you have to execute. So you've got this idea that DIY. Um, the other, the next one that is, uh, is kind of uh, out there is the do it with others idea. So you work with someone else, you bounce ideas back and forth, and you um, create something together. Uh, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory too. But what we've seen a lot are these huge crowdsourced choirs. And um, I've kind of called that D-I-F-O or doing it for others. Uh, basically, you, um, you take the skills that you're really good at and you do something for other people so that uh, you can all create this large project together. Think of it as your favorite website, Wikipedia, and everyone's putting in a little bit of knowledge. Um, it's kind of like that, for, but with music. We're doing, like, for example, um, someone who is detail-oriented and likes to create uh, submission uh, forms on the internet and knows how to create a conductor video so that everyone stays in time. Um, they then can hand it off to the singers who will sing for the create uh, for the conductor who will sing for the editors. The editors then take all those files and compile them together. And they're doing that for the singers and the conductor or the singers and the visionaries, you know? So you got this idea that we don't all have to be in every step of the way, but we can do things for each other. So if you're interested in that, you can see the link of tinyurl.com slash online dis music dispositions. Um, if you want a little bit more about that, uh, which is was my response to the COVID outbreak. Um, what I want to challenge you is I'm going to share with you Melody Myers. Melody is the, um, was the soloist in Luke's Arumque. And also she is going to be at our panel tomorrow at, uh, three o'clock. So, um, I'm going to share with you a little documentary on her life. So bear with me as I switch over. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Melody Myers. Um, and I wanted to, uh, kind of encourage, uh, uh, that that these these uh, that these types of creations are completely expansive. Like there's no, there, no one should tell you you can't do something. Um, uh, to save some time, I'm going to skip over Matt Claus's uh, little little spiel, but I'll share that during the second workshop tomorrow morning about um, working with college students and teaching them how to create these things, which is really exciting to see some uh, new students uh, who are going, getting their, their undergrads now are learning how to do these things as part of their education. But Hi now everyone. I kind of want to talk a little bit about where we might go. And I like using icons, so hopefully they'll kind of sear themselves into your brain. But this COVID situation has forced us into uh, something that we didn't expect to happen. But out of this tragedy comes some innovation. If we get stuck in this idea of always going back to normal, then um, we, we're going to miss out on, in a, and on new creative ways of making music. And then we have to ask ourselves, like, to go back to normal isn't necessarily what we want. We want to now that we've tasted this online learning and what it can do, I mean, Tim Sharp really hammered that home this morning of uh, what can we do to make our teaching even better? Do we like this idea of virtual choir? How can it enhance what we do in physical brick and uh, mortar spaces? And then I think we have to be really careful to say that it's not an either or thing, it's a both and that we can have both virtual musicking, virtual singing, as well as live singing. Uh, we have to remember that technology is hard and it's not all technology is created equal. There's learning curves, there's, there's barriers to access. Platforms and devices are very different. In the next session, we'll talk about how different Apple's products and uh, uh, Android's products are on mobile devices and how um, each of these things put a little bit of a hurdle on, but it doesn't mean that we can't keep on creating. And then finally, um, we need to start partnering. Uh, we have a great history in ACDA of choral directors uh, who are, uh, and educators and um, 
composers getting together and making things happen. Um, so now we kind of have to add another group of people and that's uh, sound engineers. I think it's really important that we realize the partnerships that can be had and should be had, especially when we are utilizing um, recordings to help our singing find new wings. And finally, the last thing that I want to remind everyone is that really the whole point of this is we need to focus on the journey, not the products. These little gears represent how creating and, and working through things and thinking and enjoying and doing music is really what's important. While the flashy virtual singing choirs and YouTube videos and TikToks and all that stuff are really cool, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing? Why do we want to be in a position of choir director, of educator? For me, it's to help facilitate music making in the students and the musicians that I work with. And so um, we get the opportunity to make music and get paid for it. Uh, we get to go on musical adventures. We get to live our lives with our students and our choirsters and our, uh, our communities. And we get to connect people through art. And so I want to return to the last video of the virtual choir performance. Um, you may remember Jacob Collier and he started off on YouTube as like a 16 year old, I think he's 14, this is his first video, but I think he's 16 in this one. And he was only limited by his pure imagination. One, two, three, come with me, up and you'll be up in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. So take 30 seconds right now and imagine what you might be able to do if you're stuck not being able to see your choir this, this fall. someone's talking to just a panelist and they said instant tears and you don't, I, I hope those are tears of joy because we, um, we have this opportunity. You see, just like Jacob, he wanted to be a musician. He wanted to do music all the time. And so what he did is he had this vision. We're going into the secret now. Um, uh, think it, wish it, be it. Okay. That type of thing. But he had this idea and he used the technologies that he had to his disposal. Uh, he started this thing called I harm you, which sounds really aggressive and violent, but it's not. It's I harmonize you. And he asked people to send him a donation and a video of themselves singing something or talking or doing a video of them. And he would harmonize. And this is what he did. He has like hundreds, maybe even thousands of these. I don't know. Well, I woke up feeling good. So Charles I, sent him I a video. Woke up, uh, feeling good. I woke up uh, 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 feeling good. Well, I woke up feeling good. I woke up feeling good. I woke up feeling good. And so he did thousands of these videos, and he started to crowd sun his uh, his con his first concert series. He eventually got picked up by a label, and he even got his own TED talk. <laughs> How's everybody feeling today? You feeling good? Fantastic. Would everybody, would everybody mind singing with me for just one second? Could you sing something? Could you sing a D? Sing ooh. Everyone sing ooh. ooh. Are you singing about there too? Ooh. Ooh. Sing louder. Sing louder. Sing ooh. Sing ooh. Sing ooh. So thank you so much for listening. Um, we do have three minutes and the Zoom chat that I keep getting is please talk about copyright. Um, we can definitely talk a little bit about copyright. We'll talk a lot about it uh, tomorrow at three. 
um, with a panel. And, um, but really briefly, just so you know what happened with me, which is, a, is something that you could understand. I uploaded the documentary and I, it, it, it listed on YouTube all the copyrighted material that's in there. Absolutely true. Um, uh, but one video uh, actually has blocked all others uh, people from uploading a video of that. And that was uh, an Enya track. And um, there are certain artists that, that have really tight reins of their derivative works. I have uh, disputed that and it is locked until five o'clock today. And so the original version with all the, with all the, good, voc the uh, uh, good levels and including the Enya track um, is locked for a couple more hours. So that happened to me. Um, now, I then disputed that case. And because this is an educational purpose, I'm not profiting from it. And I provide commentary that falls under the uh, fair use um, uh, caveats, the only word that I pop into my head, the fair use um, of, of the copyright laws. Uh, unfortunately, Enya is in Ireland and Europe has its own um, laws that are much stricter than the US are right now. And so these are fluid things. And so anything that I tell you about copyright today might be very different later. If I wanted to profit from this, um, I would have had to get mechanical and uh, technical licenses. Mechanical are audio sounds, technical are video visuals. And I would have to have paid um, something for each time someone might download it or watch it. Uh, nice thing about YouTube is they do have the content matching. And so what happens is if you get, uh, during premieres, there's aren't usually ads, but if you watch an ad, um, money will go to whoever created that content. So Eric Whitaker would have got, will be getting a chunk of change every time someone watches this documentary. I will have the documentary opened up again if the copyright claim is, um, if the dispute's honored on my behalf. If not, I will re-upload this one with the better sound. I just missed a button and there was no way for me to be able to re-render it for like a fifth time um, before the, the session. Um, so I look forward to seeing you all in a half hour where we'll use uh, our, our mobile devices to create rounds and, um, and partner songs. And then tomorrow morning, we're doing multi-tracking. Um, and then tomorrow evening, I'm, I have invited uh, Melody, da uh, David Francois, and Matthew Kloss, uh, Kloss to a, a panel. 3.30, perfect timing. Great job. Chris, we have one question, if you have a moment. Um, one person would like to know if there's any particular type of voice that would be best in recording situations. What voice types would be best for live spaces? For example, for virtual choirs, would a straighter tone be better? And that's the question from one of our participants. Um, this is the same question that you could ask to any choir director, and you will get a different answer from every single person. Um, just like if you have a bunch of people with wide vibratos in your choir, that's what it's going to sound like. If you have a bunch of people with wide vibratos in a virtual choir, that's what it's going to sound like. One of the interesting things uh, that with virtual choirs is that this audio engineer has the opportunity to change the way people sound. That's both, um, that's ne neither good or bad. It's both. And um, that is a, an autonomy issue that, uh, people have to decide for themselves. For example, we were chatting in the the uh, the premiere. Hey, I'm in virtual choir three. I've never seen myself. Of course, you haven't seen yourself. It's it, there's so many people there. Um, and do you hear yourself? Probably not, uh, unless you've got a solo. And so those are some questions that you just have to ask yourselves. Um, uh, you saw a video of. Um, uh, uh, end of your concert in that in that uh, they did uh, forget you and forget you too or whatever it is um, that that pop song right before the graduation ceremony and all those people have very different voices and the sound engineer who's a friend of mine had to like mold them add different reverb add different equalizations all those things to create um, then there are other people who use the massive wall of sound you talked uh, the the Bohemian Rhapsody example when you put a thousand people in it, it doesn't matter if there's vibrato or not. It's all gonna blend together. So there's the brief three minute version. 
Thank you, Chris. We look forward to seeing everybody else at about three o'clock. Please, of course, go to check our AL, um, ILA CDA page, take a look at the links, and you should be able to join us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chris. See you soon. Thank you.